guys, welcome back to the Piston Show. A very different type of review today. We are talk going to be talking about the new Royal Enfield Classic 350. Well, it's not exactly new. It's been in the Malaysian market for a while already and in global markets as well. For the Malaysian market, it's priced at 24,500 ringgit. That's particularly so for the Chrome edition. If you go for the non-Chrome models, you can roughly get it for about 23,000 plus plus. It is basically a major throwback to how life used to be back in the good old days before social media, before smartphones, when you could just take it slow and enjoy your journey rather than just the destination. The Royal Enfield Classic 350 is, it might be simple, it might be quite basic, but it's quite a lovely bike. So I'm here to tell you why if you're in the market for a motorcycle, why you should be considering the Royal Enfield Classic 350. But as usual, a quick word from our sponsor. Hey guys, what are some of the things that you consider when choosing a petrol brand? For me, I make sure that the petrol can keep my engine clean and also give me better mileage. I'm sure everybody thinks about this when choosing a particular brand. With BH Petrol's Infinity Ron 95 Euro 4 m you get precisely that. It has special German additives that reduces the amount of deposits that build up in your engine over the long term, keeping it clean. It also has improved friction modifiers that reduces the amount of friction that your engine has to go through, ultimately giving you better mileage and making BH Petrol's Infinity Ron 95 Euro 4 m the right choice. So if you're in the market to start off your motorcycling career or to rekindle your love for motorcycles again, then the Royal Enfield Classic 350 is a worthy consideration. But before that, I just want to tell you something that I'm really not a fan of China bikes because if you are watching this video, you're probably thinking that, hey, I want to start off my motorcycling, my, my uh, motorcycling career and I want to, or maybe just, you know, restart my love for motorcycles again. Of course, over the past couple of years, you probably would have noticed the, the basically the rise of China motorcycles. Um, I'm really not a fan of Chinese motorcycles, not because of anything, because, but because I like brands that do their own engineering. I like brands that you know, stay true to their heritage. And speaking of heritage, I like brands that have a little bit of heritage. Just because you buy a brand that is full of, uh, that has a colorful history, doesn't make you colorful. Uh, and that's the thing about Chinese bike makers. What they tend to do is they tend to buy motorcycles from BMW, Ducati, uh, Yamaha, Honda, and they take it apart, they reverse engineer it, and then they try to resell it back to you again for a much cheaper price. That does not make them motorcycle uh, manufacturers, that makes them motorcycle copiers. So that's, I just had to put that out there that I'm really not a fan of uh, Chinese motorcycle makers. However, having said that, I do have to give credit to some Chinese motorcycle makers though, particularly CF Moto, Kimco, uh, all these guys, yes, they do have some uh, engineering prowess as far as building motorcycles go. So full credit to them. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to lump them all in one category, but I just needed to put it out there. Royal Enfield though, is a totally different class of bike. These guys have been making motorcycles for well over a hundred years. They are very much a British brand as they are uh, Indian. You know, I think it is India that has made, ha that has popularized the Royal Enfield brand, uh, even though it is a Br basically a British mark. Uh, anywhere that you go in India, you definitely cannot go 100 meters or 500 meters without spotting a Royal Enfield, whether old or new. Such is the connection between that country and Royal Enfield. And in Malaysia, Royal Enfield has been in, in the local market for a while as well. But in the past couple of years, the brand has changed hands from the previous distributor to a newer one under DD Resources. DD Resources is, is basically one of those companies that when they do something, they do it well. Uh, they, are the, they are the distributors, importers and distributors of Harley Davidson, of Aprilia, of Vespa, of a lot of other brands as well. So they really know what they're doing. Now, they also have Triumph under their wing as well as Royal Enfield. So 
you know that these people mean business and they've done a stellar job of ensuring Royal Enfield reaches out to the market. How, do they do, how did they do this? Interestingly, they've done it by lowering the price of the bikes and increasing distributorship, which is basically the holy grail of ensuring that your company is profitable with great products that people want. That is Royal Enfield of Malaysia now under DD Resources. So full credit to them. They have a vast array of, mo of uh, model portfolio and the Classic 350 is one of them. 24,500 ringgit for, for the Chrome edition is actually a steal if you think about it. If I'm not mistaken, this bike used to retail for roughly close to or just over 30,000 ringgit. Now for 24,500, it's just brilliant. So I like to start my motorcycle reviews from the front back to the, from the ground up. Uh, if you're wondering why we are doing motorcycle reviews here at the Piston Show, well, we used to do motorcycle reviews under Bikes Republic, but the motorcycling industry has changed a little bit post COVID. And rather than having a channel dedicated just to, for motorcycles, we decided to lump them all together. And it's called the Piston Show anyway. So anything with a piston or without a piston, you get the drift. We will review it and put it over here. So anyway, the Royal Enfield Classic 350. It runs on this Seat or Kia tires, which I'm not really a fan of. I've hit a couple of sand patches and it did tend to wiggle a bit. So I think uh, a more more mainstream uh, brand of tire would do the bike good besides that you get a 300 millimeter front disc with, which is grabbed by by bray caliper uh, by bray is basically the entry level model for by brembo uh, so yeah under the Brembo brand, by Bray is, is basically the entry level model. These calipers tend to get stolen quite a bit. Uh, there was once upon a time, I think it was right before COVID or something, where by Bray was really like the hot stuff among thieves. So you got to be careful with these calipers. You got to be careful where you park this bike. Now further up, you get 41 millimeter telescopic Fox. I do think that the Fox of this bike, the suspension of this bike, of this bike is a little bit on the softer side. Well, this is a classic bike, and uh, it's very comfortable. I mean, check out the check out the seat. You get like that much bedding. So it is a little bit on the on the softer side. Not really a bad thing. It's a very comfortable bike. This is after all not really a sports bike, so you don't want to go barreling into a corner. So for how it has been set up, it's just perfect. Check out the mud gut. This looks like it came out from 1950. It's a <laughs> it's brilliant. It looks really good. Now again, it's a classic bike. It's meant to be such, right? You also get this multi-spoke rims, just brilliant. And this part over here, this this mud guard, this part, this entire front end together with the analog dial over here, really is a major throwback to how life used to be. So this classic 350 is actually the how would I put it? The great great grandson of a motorcycle that started off life in during the World War II era. So when it comes to heritage, brands like the Royal Enfield, Harley Davidson, all of these brands have, they are basically the definition of heritage. So it's a really good looking bike, no matter which way you look at it, but there's a touch of modernity as well. So what's modern about the Classic 350, you ask? Well, I did say that the dial is analog, but right under it is a digital dial. This is the one that gives you your fuel consumption level, your range, your, uh, your fuel gauge, and even tells you your odometer, your time. It doesn't give you your range though, unfortunately, but it comes with a 13 litre tank, which means you can roughly do about 200 plus kilometres in the Classic 350. So everything over here is also very classic. You get your, your classic, sorry, your new age starter button over here. So let me just start this up for you so that you can have a feel for how it sounds like. So it may not sound very classic, I, 
classic bikes were louder, more brash, you know, they didn't care about Euro 4 emissions and stuff like that. So of course, it's a little bit on the softer, mutus, muted side. So one of the first things that you should do if you do pick up this bike is make it louder. Like, it's a Royal Enfield Classic 350. It's supposed to sound like a classic. So anyway, further down, 349 cc single cylinder engine 20 horsepower 27 newton meters of torque top speed 114 kilometers per hour i was riding here just now at full throttle and it just wouldn't go past 115 kilometers per hour which means that if you're going to be touring with this bike uh, you know you might want to allocate a day or two extra to reach your destination but it's not about reaching your destination with bikes like this it's about enjoying the journey talking about enjoying the journey this is the bike that i did one of my greatest rides ever in my life i uh, with the classic 350 a few friends and i actually just we took on the challenge of riding to what was then the world's highest motorable road at the Kardungla Pass in the Himalayas of India. And the classic 350 was the bike that we did it with. This was the earlier, earlier model, so it was a carburetor model. And uh, there were some parts of the road where the classic 350 with the carburetor simply could not do it. So we have to swap out the classic 350 for the classic 500, which was a fuel injected bike. So managed to do that. I think roughly about three weeks on the road, a couple of thousand kilometers, and it was just epic. If you ever have the time, if you ever, if you're looking for one adventure just to do it with, the Himalayan ride on a Royal Enfield Classic is a must-do rite of passage for any self-loving loving motorcyclist or adventure or thrill seekers. You must do this ride on a Royal Enfield. It was just brilliant. And that just takes me back to my point that the bike might be slow, but it's not about being, with the Royal Enfield, it's not about going anywhere fast. It's just about enjoying the journey. And with this, you just truly enjoy the journey because the sitting position is just such a classic sitting position. And you're sitting at roughly about 805 millimeters off, off the road. I'm roughly about six feet tall, so I can flat foot. But those that are shorter might think, might feel that uh, it's a bit tall. That's because of the thickness of the seat. But I think it's a worthy trade-off because of the comfort level of the Classic 350. It's just such a nice bike to ride. It's a very comfortable bike to ride. The ergonomics are spot on. It's, I think Royal Enfield really didn't didn't do much in terms of changing the ergonomics of the bike. In fact, one of the biggest changes to a Royal Enfield in modern times is the swapping of the brake pedal and the gear lever because the older, much older Royal Enfield, you used to have the gear lever on the right and the brake pedal on the left. That was a bit of a mind F when, uh, whenever you used to ride the, uh, the, the classic Royal Enfields. So that is probably the best thing that Royal Enfield has done. Now moving further back, you get adjustable shocks at the back, twin gas shocks which are adjustable uh, for preload in six different ways. So uh, harder or softer, very handy, gives you a level of customization for how you want the back of the bike to feel like. Now further down below, you get a 270 millimeter uh, disc brake grab by a uh, by brake caliper. The good thing about the braking system of this bike is it comes with dual channel ABS. I do think that the braking, uh, the brakes are really could be a little bit sharper uh, at, at full flight just now I needed to come to a stop quite fast uh, the brakes are usually when when I'm stopping the bike fast I tend to rely on the front brakes but with the classic 350 I had to activate both brakes front and back at the same time uh, so that's one of the things about that's one of my feedbacks about the braking system of the classic 350 uh, the, as for the drive you get a conventional chain drive at the back here no complaints this is a bike that is set up to tackle the world and i think from his from how it has been set up over here you could ride this bike to the end of the world and it would still be very hardy you can find 
spare parts for these bikes almost in any country and that is the joy of the Royal Enfield Classic 350. They are built to last and the spare parts are available almost everywhere. So this is a bike that you can probably buy and pass on from generation to generation and at 24,500 ringgit I think if you want something that connects your family throughout the generations then this is a great bike to start it off with. So how does it feel like to ride the Royal Enfield Classic 350? Well, as I said earlier, it's a very traditional, very classic style of riding. Now, it has decent amount of torques, 27 newton meters is not exactly that much, but even when you're in third gear, fourth gear, you're coming out of a corner, you don't really need to downshift. You can just ride that wave of torque. And I do think that the exhaust needs to be louder because the bit of louder exhaust, you kind of want that low end burble, you know, the top, 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 top. Uh, Harley Davidson riders will call it the potato, 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 potato. So uh, that's one thing that is great about the Royal Enfield Classics. So it has a very uh, classic sitting position as well. Let me just put it up on the stand for you. See, you're sitting with your legs jutted outwards. It's a very center, uh, centered position for the for the foot pegs and it's just a very nice sitting position I have to say very classic sitting position uh, at about 114 kilometers per hour the wind blast does tend to be tiring after some time so if you're looking for a bike to go touring with I think the classic 350 will take you places but you I suggest getting a screen and of course the saddlebags the leather sad saddlebags are probably going to look great but they're not going to do much in terms of keeping the water out so uh, you will definitely need a screen for a more comfortable uh, riding riding um, experience especially if you're going to go touring in the city though it's just perfect the i do think that the side mirrors are they kind of look i don't know this bike looks better without side mirrors but jpj doesn't think so so you might not want to mess with them so bar and side mirrors will probably look better but that just also means that you're going to increase the width of the bike so you might tend to you know scrape some side mirrors which tends to be very expensive if you especially if you break some so in that sense if the bike is just the right size to go around your city riding and such but Besides all of that, it's just well suited for your day-to-day -day life. Something to go to office, you want something that looks great, something with a bit of character and heritage. The Classic 350 might just be the bike for you. If you live in Sremban or if you live in Rawang or somewhere out of town, you want something that can take you, take you to office uh, comfortably, quickly, then the Classic 350 might be the bike for you as well. Of course, there are faster bikes out there, but I said, like I said, just China just doesn't cut it for me, man. Uh, I hope that's my feedback, lah. But uh, I think if you want something that is is well suited for your day-to-day -day usage, whether you want to go to masjid for your prayers, or you want to go to office, or you just want to go touring, the Classic 350 is definitely the bike to consider. So that's it then guys, my review of the Royal Enfield Classic 350, a bike that is full of heritage, that can trace its DNA back to the world wars, and a, a bike that still looks like it's part of the modern world, despite its classic good looks. I mean, this teardrop fuel tank over here is just a major, major throwback to the 40s and the 50s. Even Harley Davidson has the, its, its Sportster, uh, Sportster models that have the classic teardrop fuel tank. You just can't go wrong with this classic setup. So if you're in the market for either a new bike uh, to start off your career, motorcycling career, or you just want to rekindle your love for motorcycles, you really can't go wrong with the Royal Enfield Classic 350. This is how, how bikes used to be. Forget about the Chinese guys. Royal Enfield Classic 350, full of heritage, full of class, and a proper classic bike. Thank you for watching. Do consider subscribing. We'll be coming back with you with more motorcycling content.